Hello, everybody. Welcome to part nine of our special study during the COVID-19 global pandemic. I'm Rick Warren, pastor of Saddleback Church, author of The Purpose Driven Life, and teacher for the Daily Hope broadcast. Now, for the past eight weeks, we have been in a series through the book of James that I'm calling A Faith That Works When Life Doesn't. And life hadn't always been working very well for the last several weeks. What we're looking at is how God tells us to act, to respond, to think, to believe, and to feel uh, when we're in the middle of a crisis. And how do you deal with the emotional and relational problems that are created by this COVID-19 pandemic? I told you that while the doctors are working on curing the disease, I'm trying to help you each week handle the dis-ease. That is uh, the stress that is caused by the pressure and all the changes of the COVID-19 pandemic that you've been feeling and having your life turned upside down. Now, in my last message, I called that a faith that leads to emotional health. And I gave you the first five of 10 commandments for emotional health based on what the Bible says. James has a lot to say about emotional health. What I want to do today in this message is to quickly review the first five principles that we went over last week and then share the final five in the what we're calling the COVID-10 commandments for emotional health. Now, I want to really encourage you that if you missed last week's message to go back and watch it online because I don't have time to go into all the details. I'm just going to quickly review those first five commandments and then we'll get into the meat of today's message. Now, I said last week, number one, the first commandment for a mental and emotional health in a crisis is to show grace to myself and to others. Show grace to myself and to others. In other words, to make it through this crisis, you need to treat yourself and everybody else the way God treats you. How does God treat you? He's gracious. He shows you mercy. He shows you forgiveness. He cuts you slack. And in the first part of this message, I talked to you about being kind to yourself and not expecting to be able to operate at the same level of efficiency and uh, energy that you did before this crisis. You're in a draining time right now. Remember we talked about in a crisis that your reserves are drained every day this continues. Your emotional reserves, your spiritual reserves, your physical reserves, everybody's having a tough time. So we need to be kind to everybody, including yourself. Then the second commandment uh, for mental and emotional health is to start and end each day by refueling your soul. And I talked about how your soul is your mind and it's your will and it's your emotions. You're not just a body, you have a soul. You are a soul with a body. How do you, how do, you do that? How do you recharge, renew, refuel your soul? Well, you do it by getting into this book. This is soul food. This is God's word. And you begin every day by reading a short portion of the Bible. We call it God's word, first word, and God's word, last word. That the first thing you do every morning is you open your Bible and, and, and you read a a short passage until God speaks to you. And then at the end of the day, you leave your Bible open on your your, uh, dresser by by your uh, bed and you read it the last thing at night. Very important. If you'll do that habit during this pandemic, you will really have a lot more emotional stability. Then the third commandment is to set and stick with a routine. And I I went into detail last week telling you that predictability is an important stress reducer, especially when everything is unpredictable, when there's so many changes going on around you by the day, that routine develops resilience, that predictability creates stability, and that structure creates steadiness. And we talked about some practical ways to build a routine into your life. Then the fourth commandment we looked at last week is to stop watching so much news. You you need to monitor your media intake. And why is that? Because we tend to become whatever we watch the most. And if you're constantly filling your mind with negative news, 
uh, it's no wonder you're going to be discouraged. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be fatigued. And, and so we talked about replacing that with some more positive things. Then we talked last week finally about the fifth commandment. And, and we looked at schedule a daily connection with people you love. Schedule a daily connection with people you love. You refill your emotional tank, your emotional cup, by connecting with people you love. And we gave you some very practical uh, teaching on that. Now, what I want to do is continue with the last five commandments. All right, let's get into it. Number six. This is an important one, too. Share your feelings instead of stuffing them. Share your feelings instead of stuffing them. I'm talking about all the negative ones that you're, you've been bound to have felt during this pandemic. Anxiety, fear, boredom, um, uh, frustration. Now, we talked about this in an earlier message, but I need to reemphasize it again because it's so important. Feelings are meant to be felt. You hear that? They're not, feelings aren't meant to be stuffed. Feelings are meant to be felt. Feelings are neither good nor bad. They're just feelings. The only reason you feel anything is because you're made in God's image. God has feelings. The Bible says God gets angry. The Bible says God gets jealous. The Bible says God gets frustrated with people. God is, God is patient, but he's also uh, frustrated. God is sad. All of the emotions you have is because you're made in the image of God. They're neither good nor bad, they're just emotions. But when you swallow your feelings, your stomach keeps score. In other words, if you don't talk it out, you're gonna take it out on your body. People say, oh, my aching back, oh, my aching neck. Well, guess why? One of the reasons may be you're swallowing your emotions, you're stuffing your feelings. So I said this in an earlier message, but I'll say it again, don't repress them push them down, don't suppress them, you know, pretend like they don't exist, instead express them appropriately and confess them to God. The Bible says in Galatians chapter six, verse two, share each other's troubles and problems. That, that means I gotta share what I'm feeling, okay? Because part of your troubles, part of your problems are the emotions you're feeling. This is why we have small groups, over 9,000 small groups in Saddleback Church. Share each other's troubles and problems. And in this way, you obey the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? Love your neighbors yourself. In one of the messages in the future, I'm gonna share with you how to love your neighbors yourself during COVID-19. But the Bible says we're to bear each other's burdens. We're to share. And for emotional health, you can't stuff it. You don't share it with everybody, but you have to have one person that you can be, hey, can I just tell you I'm really feeling right now? And then you, you share it with them and, and they're gonna love you. Paul gives us a great example of sharing your feelings instead of stuffing them in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse eight. This is a key to emotional health, okay? Here's what he says. He says, we want you to know, friends, about the hardships that we suffered in the province of Asia. Paul says, we were crushed. We were overwhelmed by great pressure. He's being honest about his feelings. He says, the burden was so heavy that we wondered if we were going to make it through it. Now, if Paul, the greatest Christian who ever lived next to Jesus Christ himself, could be that gut level about what he's going to go through, you could do it too. Who are you sharing your feelings, your emotions with. If you stuff them, you're gonna get sicker and sicker and sicker. If you share them, you're gonna get healthier and healthier and healthier. Get one person. Here's what James has to say. James chapter 5, 16. Confess your faults one to another. Notice he doesn't say confess them to God. He says confess your faults one to another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. Circle that word healed. You wanna be healed? physically, you want to be healed emotionally, you want to be healed relationally, it says this, share your faults, okay? Now, if you're going to share your faults, that means you can also share your frustrations. And if you're going to share your frustrations, you can share your fears. And if you're going to share your fears, that means you can share your feelings. That verse, confess to each other what you're feeling. Uh, you've heard me say this many times, revealing your feeling is the beginning of healing. 
Revealing your feeling is the beginning of healing. Now, if all you want is forgiveness, all you need to do is confess your faults to God. But if you want to be healed of them, the Bible says you got to share it with somebody else. This is the power of Celebrate Recovery. This is the power of honesty in our support groups. Now, let me give you a suggestion. You need to be aware during this time of unexpressed grief in your life. Yeah, unexpressed grief in your life during this pandemic. Why? Because you've already likely had a number of losses due to this pandemic. There are some missed opportunities. Some of you missed graduation. You didn't get to graduate. Some of you weren't there for the birth of a child or a grandchild because of COVID-19. Some of you couldn't go to funerals of loved ones because of COVID-19. There have been missed weddings, graduations, all kinds of life experiences that you lost out on, you missed out on. You need to grieve that. That's, a, that's, a, that's an okay thing. Grief is a good thing. It's how we move from transition to transition. Share your feelings with somebody else. Number seven, this is a big one too. It'll help you be more emotionally mature uh, during the pandemic. Seek advice before making major decisions. Seek advice from other people before making major decisions. That's the seventh commandment, COVID commandment, to, for mental and spiritual and social and emotional health. You see, under stress, I don't have time to go into this in detail, but under stress, your brain drops to lower levels. And when you're under chronic stress, you're not thinking your best. You're not giving your best thinking. So before you make any major decision, it's pretty wise and it's pretty safe for you to check in with others. This is a good time to not make decisions that are major on your own. Proverbs 15 verse 22 says this, our plans often fail because we don't seek advice, but listening to good counsel will bring success. Do you, you want to be successful in life? Do you want to be successful through this COVID-19 I mean, uh, coronavirus and COVID-19 crisis? He says, listening to good advice will bring success. If you ignore advice, he says, you're not gonna make good decisions. You see, when you're fearful or when you're upset, you can't access the smartest part of your brain. And the more stressed and the more anxious you are, more like you're, you're gonna make dumb decisions. That's why Proverbs 11 verse 14 says this, there is safety in seeking multiple counsel. All right, safety in seeking multiple counsel. So for your own spiritual and emotional health, don't make major decisions right now by yourself. Get some other people to take a look at what you're thinking about doing before you do it. All right, couple more in the COVID 10 Commandments. Number eight, space renewal breaks throughout my day. Space renewal breaks throughout my day. That's times when I, I recharge. I intentionally refuel, recharge, renew, refresh. And you need to space them throughout your day. Now, this is another breakthrough uh, that brain science is teaching us. And it is this. Instead of, for instance, a long hour break, uh, and you think, okay, I had my break today, uh, your productivity will actually go up if you, instead of taking one long break, take several five minute breaks during your day. Study has, has shown this now, that the way our brain works is that we don't need a long time to recharge, but what we do need is more frequency in, in recharging, emotionally, physically, spiritually. For instance, let me give you an example. Uh, let's say you were to take a 45 minute walk in the morning. Well, that's a good thing, uh, but you probably didn't need all 45 minutes uh, to renew your mind. But if you took a 45 minute walk in the morning and then you sit down in front of a screen for the next seven hours without a break, you just nullified the value of that walk on your emotional state it would actually be better for you to take five five-minute walks throughout your day 
where you work for a little bit and then you go walk for five minutes and you work for a little bit go walk for five minutes that would have a better impact on your brain so this is called the principle of spacing and dosing um, dosing when you take medicine you don't take one giant horse pill and that's it no no to, to get over your illness, you take, some, you, you take doses, and it's, it'll say three times a day, or twice a day, or four times a day. Dosing gets the si stuff into your system in a better format than one giant pill. And this is true in emotionally recharging. You need to figure out what renews you emotionally. I call it diverting daily. You know what recharges you, and then do it several times a day. Okay, if it's playing on the piano, if it's working in the garden, if it's shooting some hoops, if it's working on a puzzle, uh, if it's reading a book, wh whatever recharges, refills your tank, shorter breaks taken more often will help you emotionally far more than one large break. This is an important principle. So what you wanna do is periodically you get up, you stretch your body, uh, you breathe deeply, you get outside. Nature is both healing and calming. You say, well, what, what do I do during those refreshing breaks that I'm taking, this little five minute break? Well, one of the things you can do is talk to God. Talk to God during those breaks, while you're walking, while you're, you're, while you're you know, doing your hobby. That will recharge you in multiple ways. Here's a great promise from Isaiah 40, verse 30 and 31. Even young people become exhausted and give up too soon. But those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. That's refilling your tank. That's recharging your battery. They will renew their strength. They will soar like eagles. They'll keep running and not grow weary. They'll walk and not grow weak. That's called emotional health. That's spiritual health. And it comes from talking to God, waiting on the Lord. And you can do that when you take these breaks throughout the day. Let me show you one other great promise. It's Isaiah 58 verse 11. Here on the screen it says this, the Lord will guide you continually, watering your life. Don't you like this? Watering your life when you're dry. You feeling emotionally dry right now? He says, I'll water your life and keeping you healthy too, and you will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. God says, I don't want you drying up during this pandemic. I don't want you going dry. I will water you, but you gotta spend time with me, you know, time each throughout the day. All right, now the next step, number nine, is also an important one, very important. Number nine, if you wanna be emotionally healthy as we come out of this crisis, serve someone suffering more than you. So I need to serve someone suffering more than me. Look around and you'll find somebody in worse situation than you are. For your own mental and emotional health, you need to get the attention off yourself and you need to focus on somebody else who's hurting more than you are. You need to give back. You need to make a difference with your life. It's not about you. You need to get out of your self-centeredness. Now, James talks about helping the most vulnerable people many times in the book of James. Let me just read you one verse. We'll come back to this. In society, he says, the most vulnerable people, he said, are orphans, don't have parents, and widows, elderly, single adults. He said, they're the most sidelined and the most vulnerable. James chapter 1, 27. The religion, listen to this, the religion that God our Father accepts, the religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to care for orphans or widows who need help in their distress and to keep yourself uncorrupted by the world. He's talking about public charity and private purity. Public charity, help the people who are most needy and, and private private uh, you know, purity. Right now, our church is feeding tens of thousands of people. We normally feed a couple thousand families a month. This month, I think it was 30,000 families. And we are helping the most vulnerable in, in many, many tangible ways. There is a place for you to serve if you want to help. 
But it, not only will you help others, but serving uh, others who have greater needs than you actually helps you refill your emotional and spiritual tank. There's many, many promises about this. Let me just give you one. Proverbs 11, 25 promises. The generous prosper and are satisfied. And those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. You want to be refreshed yourself? Start refreshing somebody else. Look for somebody to help. Be a servant to others. Important. Ten commandments, COVID commandments. Finally, number 10. The 10th commandment is this. Control what's controllable and trust God for the rest. Control what's controllable and trust God for the rest. Now, both of these are important. Uh, God has a part uh, in, in your mental and spiritual and emotional health, and you have a part. Now, God isn't going to control the things that he's already given you control of. God gave you a lot of his will when he gave you a brain. And he gave you a brain, the ability to make good choices. And he gave you a will to choose. And he expects you to make wise choices. He said, so what is, what is controllable? The things you, can have, you have a choice in. A lot of things you don't have a choice in, but the things you do have a choice in, those are controllable. You can control when you go to bed at night. You can control what you eat. You can control when you get up. You, there's a lot of things that you can control. Those are the choices that's your part in, in the bargain. You control the controllables, but then you let God handle the stuff you can't control and you trust him that. Now, James says a good example of this the balance between God's part and my part. James says uh, in chapter two, verse 22, he said, a good example is Abraham. And from Abraham's example, he says this. From Abraham's example, we see that his faith and his actions, God's part and my part, his faith and his actions work together. His faith was made complete by what he did. Now, let me just be honest with you. It's easy to go to either extreme here. Uh, you can say, well, I'm just going to trust God. And you become a passive little, you know, clod. You, you, you give up all your humanity. I'm just going to trust God. And you use it as an excuse to do nothing. On the other hand, the other extreme is, well, if it's to be, it's up to me. And you act like God doesn't have any part in it. It's all on you. No, passivity is wrong. And depending like it all depends on me is both wrong. Both of them work, faith and works. We're going to come back to this where uh, James talks to us about the balance between God's part and my part in staying healthy. You know, in, in the first book of uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, written by J.R.R. Tolkien, there's a moment where Frodo complains about all the evil and pain in the world, and he's upset about it. And he says, you know, everybody's experiencing this evil and everybody's experiencing this pain in his day. And, and he complains to Gandalf. And Frodo says, I wish it needs not have happened in my time. I wish it needs not happen in my time. I wish, and you may be saying that about this pandemic, I wish it hadn't happened in my time. But Gandalf wisely and sympathetically responds to Frodo and he says, well, so do I. Proto, so do I, and, and so do all the people who live to see such times. And then he says, but that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the times that we've been given. All we have to do is to decide what to do with the time that is given to us. There are a lot of things in your life you have no control over. You can't control the pandemic. You can't control how the government deals with it. You can't control a lot of different things. But you can't control the circumstances of life. But you can respond how you will respond. You can choose how you respond. And if you will put into practice these 10 principles from the Bible, you're going to come out of this crisis a whole lot stronger. You're going to be mentally stronger. You're going to be emotionally healthier and you're going to be spiritually more mature. 
But it's all your choice. You get to choose how you respond. And here's the good news. You don't have to do it by yourself. Jesus Christ is waiting to help you. You don't have to do these 10 things on your own, certainly not on your own power. Jesus will be your savior if you let him be your savior. Now, every week we close by doing three or four things together. And the first thing we do is we recommit our lives to Jesus Christ. I'm gonna pray a prayer right now. If you've never prayed this prayer, I invite you to pray it. I invite you to say it again as a recommitment of your life to Christ. All right, let's bow our heads. Just say, dear God, say, tell God, dear God, you know how empty I am. You know when my tank is low, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically. And I, I need to be recharged. I need to be refueled. And Lord, I understand these principles that you have put in your word. But honestly, I can't do them on my own power. And right now I'm so tired, I don't know I've got the energy to do these. So I need you in my life. I need your strength, I need your power. Jesus Christ, I need you to save me. I need you to change me, I need you to empower me to be able to do what you've called me to do. So God, I will make the right choices, but I'm asking you to give me the power to do them. I'm asking you to fill me with your spirit and your love. And I humbly ask this, that you accept me into your family. In your name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer just now, I, I want you to let me know about it, okay? I want you to text me right now. Text New Start, one word, N-E-W-S-T-A-R-T, New Start. Text it to 99,000, all right? And that way I can send you some material, help you with your decision. If you're overseas, email me, newstart, one word, at saddleback.com. That's the first thing we do. Now the second thing we do every week is we express our gratitude to God through giving back to Him. And I wanna just say this week, friends, your generosity online is amazing. It is allowing us to literally feed tens of thousands of out of work people right now. It is allowing us to serve the emotional and spiritual needs of literally tens of thousands of people. So thank you for your generosity. Uh, you can give at saddleback.com slash give. You can set up a, 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 a weekly account that is automatic if you want to, but thank you so much. Third thing we do is we meet in small groups for some more support. And of course, we're doing this online right now. If you're not in a small group, we'll help you get in a small group. Text me, small group at 99,000. One word, small group at 99,000. I'll help you get in a group. Or you can email me, small group at saddleback.com. Everybody needs the support of a small group during this crisis. So please, doesn't matter what city you live in, let us help you. Now, number four, if you wanna volunteer as a care caller, or as a care writer, I mentioned this earlier, I want you to text me, text CARE to 99,000, CARE to 99,000, or email me, care at saddleback.com. We'll get right back to you and help you find a place that you can give back. I wanna remind you, every Tuesday, every campus, Together Tuesdays, Campus Zoom Fellowships, That'll be a great, great time. And by the way, this next week, I'm going to be sending you in the mail a survey. And I'm asking you as your pastor to help me help you by taking this survey. The Bible says, know well the condition of your flock. And so I'm sending this survey to you, to asking, asking you to help me know what you need during this crisis. I love you, I thank God for you. Be sure to tell other people about this message pass it on to others so that more and more people can be emotionally and spiritually healthy during the pandemic. I love you guys. We'll see you next week.